Number five, suicide woods. A few years ago, I was walking through the woods off the beaten track a bit, and I smelt this really overpowering sweet smell. Being nosy, I pulled back the undergrowth to have a look and found a dead body. The guy had clearly been there a while and wasn't looking great, all swollen and green and black with various runny bits. The local wildlife had also been dining well for a few days. I called the police who told me to wait with the body until they arrived. Being in the middle of nowhere, it took a while for them to arrive. It soon got dark and I was just sat there in the dark with him for a long time. It turned out he had committed suicide. For a long time afterwards, I had dreams about him and he would talk to me and not nice things. Mainly about how he was angry I had disturbed his resting place and he wanted me to kill myself. Probably just my imagination, but all pretty disturbing at the time. He still turns up in my dreams from time to time and no doubt will be tonight after typing this. Number 4. Drowsy Forest About two years ago I was driving home from a family reunion pretty late at night, and the drive was about two hours. I didn't stay the night because I had to be back for work the following day. Most of the drive was on roads with dense bushes and trees on either side, the real creepy ones you see a lot in movies. Anyway, I had been driving about 45 minutes and I was starting to get really tired. You know how sometimes you just suddenly become really tired out of nowhere? Well, yeah, that happened to me. I knew I wasn't going to last, but I didn't come across any place that I felt I could park and safely sleep. Anyway, after it became clear to me that I wasn't going to find a place to pull up, and my tiredness wasn't going away, I did something very questionable. I pulled over to the side of the road onto the grass behind some bushes to try and hide my car from anybody else who was going to come past. The roads weren't empty, I came across another car every few minutes or so. I made a mental note that the time was 11.22 and then fell asleep. Sometime later I was awoken by a scratching sound. I looked at the clock, 11.50. The sound stopped after a few seconds and because I was still extremely tired, I didn't bother looking around and simply went back to sleep. I was later awoken by the same sound and it was now 12.40. This time it really freaked me out because the sound didn't stop. The thought ran across my mind that it was just an animal inspecting the car, but why would it return almost an hour after it had left the previous time? I looked in my rearview mirror and just managed to catch a glimpse of something running away into the forest. Now, at the time, I thought it was the damn hook killer. You know, the one that scratched that couple's car and then slaughtered the guy when he got out to investigate. Fuck that, I thought to myself, so I got the hell out of there. There was a bend no more than a hundred yards up the road. And as I came around it, there was a fucking car, parked off to the side of the road with the driver's side door open. I slowed down just to look to see if anyone was in there. There wasn't. Then I looked in my rearview mirror. I didn't see anything, and all of a sudden this guy came sprinting around the corner. He started screaming at me, shouting stuff like, Hey, hey you, get the fuck out of your car, now. I sped the fuck out of there and never saw the guy again. Number three, miracle call. So this happened to me last summer when I was back at my parents' house during the holidays. It was around 3 a.m. and I was in my room on my computer when I got a call from my sister. Now that was already a little bit weird since my sister's room is just down the hallway from mine and she could have just came in my room. I went to pick up and the call ended as soon as I reached the phone. I figured that she wanted to speak with me so I got up and went to her room. As soon as I reached her door, she started screaming that someone was in the room with her, so I busted in, and of course nobody was here. After she stopped crying, she told me that she woke up and saw a dark shadow just centimeters from her face, and that's when she screamed. I explained to her that she had called me, but she explained to me that her phone was not even in her room and that she was sleeping. Sure enough, her phone was actually downstairs in her purse. The weird part is that I have the log of her call on my phone, but she doesn't. Never managed to explain this one. Number two. Who's calling? When we first moved into the house I grew up in, I used to hear things calling my name from the opposite end of the house. Like, I would be in my room playing with Legos or something, and I would hear my dad call my name from his room. So I'd go to my parents' bedroom and ask them what they wanted, and they'd always tell me that they never called my name. Being a little kid, I honestly started to think that they were playing a joke on me, because this happened about once every couple of days. 
Well, one night it happened and I went to ask them what they wanted, like always. But right as I stepped into their room, I heard my mom's voice calling for me from the living room, which is all the way on the other side of the house. It was at that exact point that I knew no one was tricking me, because I was looking at both of my parents sitting in front of me. I kind of kept this to myself until my brother was diagnosed with partial narcolepsy. One of the symptoms of narcolepsy is apparently oral hallucinations, so I thought maybe I had it too. Went and got myself checked. Completely fine. So I have no idea what was calling my name all those years and I still hear it at night whenever I come visit and stay over. Number 1. Dreams or Reality when I was 13 my grandmother was dying of cancer and my mother and I stayed at her house and took care of her during her last few weeks. One night at three or so in the morning, my mother ran into my room and told me that my grandmother, who was by this time completely bedridden, entered my mother's room, woke her up and then walked out of the room. There was no creepiness at the time, just a genuine concern for what my grandmother could possibly be doing up at 3 a.m. when she was literally days away from dying. We ran into her room and sure enough she had passed away. Obviously, given the shock of my grandmother dying, my mother and I didn't sit around chatting about how weird the whole experience was. But months or perhaps even years later, I asked her about that night and she has no memory of telling me that my grandmother was up and walking around the house. She doesn't even remember what woke her up or why she woke me up. Gives me shivers just writing it. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. See you next time.